Hi everybody, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about European farming. Um, this is an important category if you're interested in making money in farming. Uh, Europeans make the most money um, from their farms in the world. Approximately 50%, uh, let's say at least 30% of the total value of what is sold on earth uh, in terms of food is from, so 50%, let's just say, um, 40% um, is from Europe. So an unbelievable amount of wealth um, is from farming in Europe. Um, now, as you can see, it's not um, necessarily distributed like you'd think. Um, actually, um, this is a kind of a hot topic right now. A lot of the farming is actually around Ukraine. So it makes me think uh, that this latest uh uh, war uh, in Ukraine may actually be about food. Um, you can see that a lot of farms are in uh, Russia here and in Ukraine, um, as well as in Western France, uh, Northern Germany, and Western Poland. Um, but there are a lot of farms uh, down here in Romania uh, and uh, other areas in Turkey as well. So, and even in Spain and along the north coast of Africa and also in uh, England particularly on the east coast of England and up here in Denmark. So, uh, but uh, it really does raise some very important uh, questions about what's going on in Ukraine for real. So uh, if farming is about money, we'll kind of talk a little bit about that uh, in terms of the numbers in the United States and try to estimate uh, what it might be in Europe. Um, but let me go to the, to the graph really quick. So basically, um, the uh, total exports is about $1 trillion. That's a lot of money um, <clears throat> uh, for all the countries in Europe. Um, and you can see, uh, I think I can do this here. Let's see, this is all of the uh, areas. So you can see of the economy, it's actually kind of a smaller part of the economy. However, we're gonna look at it in detail. So <clears throat> now, Here's Europe, and then you can set it for agriculture. So this is where Europe is exporting their food to, so where they make their money from. It's taking a little while to load for some reason. Sorry about that. Let me pause it. Sorry about that. So you can see here um, that the exports are actually to uh, the United States and China a lot. So um, believe it or not, there's also some uh, North Africa, Middle Eastern exports, and even into uh, South America, and actually quite a lot in Australia too. Five billion dollars sent to Australia. So um, this is the um, <coughs> uh, kind of picture for that. Um, it's also interesting to look at over time um, for agriculture. You can see um what's been going on here so uh asia america and africa um and then global share this is kind of show us the graph over time so you can see that food and everything just about um has been going down in europe so that's a big problem in general uh, meaning that the exports in general have been going down significantly um, and you can see that actually agriculture is the fourth or third spot here and it's actually kind of taken an uptick uh, relative to some of these other areas. So you can see uh, chemicals being number one, services, and then vehicles, and then agriculture, and actually it being quite high um, <clears throat> overall. So this is the percentage of the global market. So uh, wow, right? <clears throat> 50, almost 44% of um, the market. So. <clears throat> However, we are talking about a big surface area in general uh, of the map. So I'll try to zoom out here in a moment, but it's very important to kind of take a look at this. Let me zoom out a little bit here so you can see a little bit more of the picture of what's going on. So you can see <clears throat> that this is quite a vast area of farmland, um, even compared to India and China. However, it's not as dense um, as what we see in India and uh, China. One thing, <clears throat> excuse me, trying to drink some water here. I'm gonna get into the topic of water in a moment here. But one very interesting thing is that where does Europe get its food in the winter time, right? <clears throat> it's pretty warm here in Southern Europe, but basically Africa may hold the key to the future of farming 
for not only Europe, but the entire world. Um, it's really centrally located on the map here. If I zoom out even one more level, you can start to see <clears throat> the big picture of the entire planet. So actually, Africa, although it has a jungle here, you have to kind of cut out that piece, um, may hold a huge part for the uh, wintertime and summertime foods. Uh, for example, nuts, bananas, fruits, all that comes from Mexico and the United States travels about 3,000 miles. Um, it's actually a little bit further of a journey um, than going driving from Mexico. You have to go along the water and we'll look at some of that marine traffic here. So here's the marine traffic map. We'll get into that in a little bit here, but let's start by looking at this. So basically, again, Ukraine is a huge part of the puzzle here. I was completely shocked when I realized that Ukraine is actually about food. So <clears throat> it's a scary point because the Middle East perhaps really depends on Ukraine um, on food. So just going across the Caspian Sea or the Black Sea um, here to get to Iran and even the north part of Iran is vital for food for the entire Middle East. So it's unbelievable how important Turkey is um, and some of this North African stuff um, <clears throat> just to get food to areas. And you can see Cairo, very dense, uh, perhaps the most dense area of farming. And a lot of people consider Cairo part of Europe. If you th think of the Mediterranean as European, half the Mediterranean is North Africa. So basically Cairo plays a huge part in the farming uh, lessons to be learned. And in fact, uh, early in the history, when Athens was getting going, a lot of the philosophers left Athens and went to Cairo, Alexandria, where my mom went to school and studied in Alexandria. So actually that may have been a farming problem even back a thousand years ago. So they left to Cairo and learned how to farm from the Africans, believe it or not. So this river goes all the way through here, through Sudan, and then there's a little farming spot right in here. So even this may affect European farming via Cairo. So uh, the story for farming in Europe is definitely um, interesting because of the history. So. Uh, if you look at some of the pictures of the farms, they have some of the coolest looking small farms in Europe. And on this picture, you'll see on the tree map here, if we isolate this, I'm gonna let that load up here. It's gonna take some time, but uh, basically cheese is a huge part of the farming here. There's a lot of cows. I, I've looked at some different European maps. Um, there's just a ton of cows uh, here in the, this part of Europe. Uh, and then there's a lot of farming of uh, you know, all kinds of things in France. My sister has hiked along the French Alps here and it was unbelievable pictures that she sent of these small, and it's basically one of the interesting things is that these are elderly farms. So these are people over the age of 40, typically farming if they are, um, and there's a lot of depression in Europe. So the, because it's so old, um, these are older people trying to farm, which need help. Um, so it creates an excellent opportunity for the Middle Eastern people to travel Europe, help out on a farm and uh, help some older people and then learn how to uh, live in a different country uh, and maybe even trade some ideas uh, with the Middle East and Europe. So that's a really interesting, there, there's a lot of refugees even heading from Northern Africa, people dying, you probably heard about these boats um uh, refugees and uh, it's a big question because actually europe needs help with farming so it's possible that russia and ukraine even needs help too um and this war is really questionable whether or not it's about food um it's something super important that's not publicized in the media at all how important food is to the entire picture of europe it's unbelievable so um <clears throat> I want to show you the maps here of the river system so you can start to see that this piece of the puzzle actually shows the river system here in Ukraine is very important and actually agriculture and irrigation is almost a hundred percent the truth for farming today so I was shocked to see that um, in India in some parts of India they are 98 percent dependent on irrigation even despite tons of rain. So California, 100%, maybe even 200% dependent on the water. So the water is becoming a very serious problem because the aquifers 
underground aquifers may not have enough water to support. I've done some calculations and I've seen it in the United States. I did the calculation uh, myself just to double check and we do have some time, maybe 20 to 40 to even 50 or 60 years left of water, but that's a debate depending on how you do the numbers. So underground water doesn't last forever and how we get water even from the ocean in terms of desalination is another really important thing. The actual salt water content is higher in these two lakes. The Black Sea and Caspian Sea have a high salt water concentration, making it unable even for fish. And actually there's not any fish anymore in the Baltic Sea at all. Um, you look at this map and you can see some of the fishing vessels. You can see there's absolutely no fishing almost going on here. All the fishing has moved north and even out to Iceland. This is a tremendous amount of fishing and perhaps a shame because we got to be careful. Coast of France looks very bad because just so much fishing going on. And right in here, you can see in the islands, they're still doing fishing, but they've actually abandoned fishing in much of the Mediterranean already. So what's going to happen? Are they just going to kill all the fish off the coast here too? Some kind of regulation needs to start and may need to start in Iceland uh, even to change the policy in Europe. So I don't eat fish, I don't eat meat, but it's an important fact of farming to think about both the uh, water and the land. So uh, still the story is very interesting because of the Middle East and the way in which farming drastically changes as you get into the desert regions and the warmer areas like Saudi Arabia, right? It's just totally different. You can see actually Baghdad down here has quite a lot of farming, as well as Syria and South Turkey and even Northern Iraq, right? And you can see Western Iran is even trying to farm there. If you look at the map here, you can see this is almost all desert and yet they're trying to farm in it. So it's because of the warmer weather so they try to use the warmer weather and then irrigate it and farm i need a glass of water give me a second here so again this is the place to make money with farming it's the most historic areas um, we have the middle east the start of civilization the start of farming and this is where you can make money so uh, the scary thing in the united states you can only make about 700 dollars per acre and um, that actually varies a lot because what if you start selling a uh, specialty crop so the problem in the united states is that they do almost all corn and soybeans and a lot of that is let's say even more than 50 percent of the crops in the united states are corn or soybeans and not even used for food so europe actually changes that whole picture of what farming is about and makes it more traditional and more family oriented um, which is super interesting. So um, again, these spaces are very important to look at. Um, I think I added the population in here. So I'm gonna add the population one in here and try to light that up so you can see what's going on. So there is just, that is the population. So you can see this is packed with people here and you can see that there's a lot of people right in here in these bluer areas. Now, as I turn off the population, let's just look at just the population so we can see. I'm gonna turn off the cropland map. Now, that is population, that is crops, right? And let's pull it in all bright as we can. And you can start to see that. Let's even change the map if we can to a different map so hopefully we can see gray. I don't know what I should do here. Land and water, I'm trying to figure out this here myself. So let's do a basic map and see what we can do to get this. So that's population, farmland. It's really hard to see, you gotta zoom in. I like to stick to satellite map because I get to see the ocean here as well. So I'm gonna have to turn off some of this because it's just too bright. And then you can start to see this. So actually the population map needs to be removed to really see the farming, but you can kind of see it's particularly here in Germany um, and some other areas. But uh, so population is a serious thing in Europe. Let's look at just the population aside. So you can start to see this area in Europe is actually the most heavily populated. You can see this big spot for Paris 
and actually everything, all the farmland moved it west of Paris and even the farmland here moves up along the coast of England. And you may want to study the, where is it? Oops, sorry, the river maps, right? So you can see that the rivers kind of drain out this way. So that's one of the reasons why you get the farming over there. Now I will zoom in here and you can pan around. It's a little bit more fun to look at the higher resolution <coughs> images of the rivers. You can add population and farming onto this. I definitely recommend uh, playing around with it. Um, what I would do is search for these human population density ones. Um, and then also a map agreement of global cropland. Um, so I'm gonna make that a little bit brighter so we can see it, because that's what we're discussing. I'm gonna pause this for a second. So I gotta go here in a minute. So I'm gonna try to make this quick. I wish I could get into so many details in terms of specific farms, but here's a map of cropland for all of Europe. You can see that they're actually missing Ukraine, vital part, and Russia, and even this here in Turkey, right? So it's really nice to look at this map here, but if you want some spec details, you can see that. Now, I wanted to look at this carefully. This is the crop calendar for Europe. You can see it actually starts a little bit earlier than the calendar in the United States and France, for instance, right? We're starting in March. Usually we start in April or May. <coughs> so the planting season, and then you have harvesting season, and you can see here it is in Germany. Um, for a different season. So they got all of that here. This is the website up here. Um, you may want to look at Denmark, right? That starts a little bit more similarly. Greece here, um, actually starting pretty early. Um, Hungary, Ireland, um, Italy, starting very early, even in January, right? Um, so uh, some interesting details here. You may also want to look at North Africa. There's Norway in here. Portugal, Poland, Romania, all these city places, Spain. So just a ton of different cool uh, data here. So what you do is you click on crop calendars here and you can get that. Um, so let's go back to the map again. There's so many interesting areas in here to look at. So I'm gonna zoom in and hopefully this will load. Sorry about the slowness of my internet connection. But you can see some of the great detail here in Europe and definitely don't miss Denmark and some of the coastal regions here, the colder areas. I'm actually very interested in farming in cold areas because of its difficulty and interest to outer space farming. So as well as farming in the Middle East can be very interesting <coughs> to study. So you can see here in Italy, you got a lot of farming there. In France, you got here, but it's actually uh, kind of just actually north of Paris, actually. Um, and then here you got kind of a farming center here. <laughs> and you can see outside of Madrid, northern Spain, uh, there's actually some farming on this little island here off of Italy. You can see some farming in Greece. I've actually looked carefully at these farms in Greece, it's super interesting to look at this little area, how the farm, you know, you may have to travel 200 kilometers just to get to Athens uh, to feed the population, but there's a little farming parts in there as well, and you can travel by boat. Um, and there's a whole bunch of areas in here. So here's how important Ukraine is. So you can start to see just the vastness, almost the entire country is farming. So there's a lot of great farmers there and we really need to rethink about what's going on with that conflict and how that relates to Russia. And actually Russia is almost centered right here in Ukraine, right? If you look at this whole farming region, we kind of have a center right there, right? In terms of centroid, but maybe it actually sways a little bit out towards Russia given this. So a lot of this farming even goes into uh, Kazakhstan. Um, which is unbelievable amount of farming over here too. So this is very vital for the Middle East. It's unbelievably important to get transportation routes over to, for example, Afghanistan so that they don't have to be dependent necessarily on American food. Um, so, uh, man, I'm gonna zoom out. I really shouldn't, but uh, let's stay zoomed in here. So again, um, when we look at Europe, uh, it can help to look at the population map. Um, I really like looking at the details here. I would add it to the FAO. You get one meter resolution. I think this is even slightly better on this map. For some reason, it looks better because they got the heat and it shows uh, some of the areas like in Paris and you can see Amsterdam and some other areas. Hamburg and Berlin, it will get some pretty detailed uh, stories behind um, the farming situation there. So 
what I'd recommend, for example, is you can start to look at the farm map and then find a major city that you are located in and then find the nearest farm to you wherever you are in Europe or around the world. Again, a lot of interesting farming up in here as well. So it does get cold, uh, but some of the water is warm off of this coast here. I was actually surprised you could swim in the water even though you're pretty far north. So, uh, but anyway, so this is the main picture here. I'm gonna take a break for a second to rethink about everything, but you might wanna take a careful look at this map. Um, definitely there's some coastal regions as well, uh, some areas that are under farmed. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is the soil map. So this is super important because you can't farm unless you have good soil. It could be really rocky um, or it could be actually soil and you need water too. So we're gonna look actually at the rain maps here too. So you can take a river and you can irrigate it, but it's nice to have rain um, for this. So in the United States, typically this uh, lighter color is kind of pretty good farmland. The pink is very good farmland and the blue is all floodplain. So a lot of this has been filled in. Even parts of Amsterdam were originally not even part of the city. So you can see here down in Iraq, they got a lot of floodplain here. So that floodplain means that it's been sediment that's moved over thousands of years or even millions of years into these regions and the dirt can be black and pretty good in some of these blue regions but it also means flooding from time to time so interesting to think about that um, actually most of the world in China for instance I zoomed out you see that China has a lot of almost almost I would say 70 percent 75 percent of their farmland is floodplain farming along the Yangtze River and the Yellow River um, is a lot of farming so and this happens also in Bangladesh as well. Um, and even in South America, over in Paraguay. In Argentina, you could even argue that that's a lot of floodplain farming. So actually the soil is very important. In the United States, some areas, the soil is actually turning into sand. California has hundreds of thousands of acres that have turned entirely to sand. And what are you gonna do about that? Like it's turned, they basically used up all the nutrients I don't know how they're gonna deal with that. So they may have to import good dirt, um, even from the bottom of the ocean, maybe the right answer in California. Um, so, so this soil map can actually be very fun and very detailed. I definitely recommend uh, looking at it. It'd be nice if FAO could add the soil map. I don't know if they already have it, um, but the soil map can be helpful. It's hard to have all these things under one website, but this is the soil map here. Um, I want to look at the forestry map. So <clears throat> you can see that there's, I don't know, this didn't really load, right? Um, this is the degradation of a forest. It's kind of hard. I am not the best at working on this, but you can see shrubland. Agriculture is pretty much taken over, and you can see in Ukraine, especially agriculture here, right? Um, so there's just a huge amount of agriculture, and essentially, all the forest has been either cut over the last few hundred years and then regrown. Um, so actually farmland is huge in Europe. So it's just uh, really amazing to think about the forest. You can see some of the old forest diagrams. I don't know why it's not loading, but something to think about. We can try to load it as you see, but forestry maps are super interesting to look at um, because i love trees man i don't understand one of my favorite things is just to see even one tree out in the middle of a huge field that has been farmed it's kind of nice just to see <laughs> at least one tree so uh man the farmers would cut everything down why not leave a little bit of trees or even try to regrow a tree yes it's hard to mow around it but it's still nice so here is the crops. I grabbed the data from the FAO and did the data myself. Grabbed it on a log graph. Um, let's just change it so you can see it's actually not like you think. So there's only a few crops, again, but believe it or not, this is more diverse than most parts of the world. You got grapes here being quite high, potatoes, corn as usual, but actually wheat being almost, it is number one, I guess. So bread and foods like that uh are very important and then sugar beet and then some other areas oranges and some things so uh but it is interesting to look at the log graph just so you can see what's on the same scale so when you're on 10 times each one of these is 10 times different so it's a 10 factor of 10 uh i believe so 
uh, might be even more than that. So, um, but it's important to kind of see what the crops are going on here. Um, the value of the crop may be different. Uh, I wish I could talk about that more. So this is a quick map that I wanted to really look at in terms of the rain. I love looking at the rain maps. You can see here in Spain, for some reason it doesn't show everything. So we're gonna go through this quickly. So you can see all the months, February, uh, March, you can see uh, basically Europe is similar to the United States, but actually even gets more rain than the United States and it's actually less rain than you would think. And this area with light green, you almost cannot farm in this region. So that means it's always gonna be irrigation even in these regions um, here with green. So that is not enough rain um, typically. Now this is getting a lot of rain, but again, this is the last part of India that you can actually have as wildlife. So and you can see here July coming in uh, August and unfortunately this map does not show everything. You can grab uh, more of the data yourself hopefully and see uh, on this. So what I'll do is I'll switch. This is October here, November and actually November being pretty rainy and you might even have some farming opportunities right along there. Um, and there's some beautiful coastline there too. So. Uh, let's just go back to the river map really quick and then the farming map again so the rain map is critical uh as well as the soil map let me pause this first oh yeah so again here's the major climate map um you can kind of see what the climates are like you can see italy here uh, starting a little bit earlier and being warm a lot like california so actually this southern part of europe does have some of the similar climate they actually originally before you talked about how my friends told me well it's really called the mediterranean climate so this california climate that we see here is actually quite vast here and a lot of it is along north africa too so there's some great farming there as well possibilities if you think about how much of our food comes from california and mexico it's an unbelievable amount and really you don't get the really awesome rain and farming until you get down to even florida so a lot of this is really has to be irrigated and you don't have a whole lot of seasons in terms of farming so here you can see uh, you basically have to have quite a long season just to grow the food because you don't really have rain or the temperature that you need and let's go down to france because that's in germany that's pretty much the main area so you can see this is the planting season and the growing season and uh, so on so yeah um so again here's the main map of europe um take a careful look at it um specific crops rain maps climate maps i wanted to show you this map because this is usgs map of the earthquake so earthquakes are a factor uh, in terms of how the world world works um, it's interesting you can zoom in also on this map it gives you different level of detail if you're looking for the crops you may also want to look at the google earth online map it shows the cloud patterns which are interesting as well um, here is the fao data that i downloaded now i wanted to highlight this as a very important piece of the puzzle right so consumption is about 20.1 billion global hectares or 2.8 global hectares per person so we are actually consuming two we don't have enough land and we don't have enough food so they're saying that this is saying 2.1 so a lot of the world in africa is doing their part they're using one football field and i wanted to explain what a hectare is this is one hectare but the actual person in europe uses about six of these or four of these or even more so uh so basically in europe we're up at five six seven and even in the united states almost 10 football fields for food per person and you can see the data does change a little bit on human development index but again africa definitely being reasonable on their food but europe in the blue here is the worst right so they're basically at six or four football fields per person and that is probably an underestimate because think about all the other things that you do every year besides just eat food there's a lot of things that are involved and expenses okay so we have a garbage collecting going on right outside right now which is kind of interesting yes yeah, so it's also trash uh, food waste 
definitely should think about that. So even though these numbers, we waste 30% of all of our food. That's one in every three parts of our food is wasted. Unbelievable amount of waste. I'm trying to personally cut back as much as I can on paper and plastic waste. But it is really important to think about farming um, and how to work together. Almost everything is farmed here. And when you require 10 football fields worth of land to feed the cattle if you eat meat plus all the other details involved man that's a lot of land so how we can do this is unbelievable and super interesting and you can see definitely some areas on um, ukraine becomes vital and russia becomes vital for farming so uh, as well as Poland and other areas that you consider poor parts of Europe, but actually are extremely important. So it actually gets much poorer, you know, uh, as you head to Eastern Europe and into Russia, it's actually becomes whiter and poorer. So it's a really is a misconception thinking about wealth being white because actually Russia isn't as wealthy as you might think in Eastern Europe and these areas of Europe in the east are actually pretty poor um, and anyway, in fact very poor so uh, so but the still the real big question is a lot of this money is being made from farming so uh, again uh, if you look at this here this is the exports by a country and I don't even know if I want to trust this map let's try to look at something this. So again, uh, you can change the settings to two digit codes, which makes it a little more readable so we can see. So you can see basically paper is being huge and it's considered food. So still, uh, the food economy is, is, a, is a very difficult part. So I wish I could go into so much more details, but essentially Europe is the biggest part of the, well, you know, the United States is technically the biggest part, but actually maybe Europe is a debate in terms of money. So in terms of exports, United States is slightly bigger, but this is quite a lot of range of farming. So, and we actually need to restructure the way that we're doing it. We're not even doing it very good in the United States. A lot of this is corn. And even in Europe, a lot of it is wheat, so we could kind of work on a variety of foods. Um, and then definitely Africa and South America are going to come into play uh, in terms of wintertime farming. So where is Europe? Europe's diet may not be as good as we think, um, and it may not be as sustainable. So uh, I was doing some data and studies, and I found out that maybe the European food system maybe isn't as stable as we think. Um, for example so many factors uh, like the aging population in Europe um, and then the depression and just different things that you might not expect um, and actually the war going on in Ukraine um, is an unbelievable problem so you can see here China's farming India's farming Southeast Asia and Australia so I've looked at all these things you might want to look at other videos that I posted on this topic I'd love to talk about details I like looking at actually islands and other kind of interesting uh, things uh, about farming so uh, let me know what you're thinking about I'd be glad to talk it over with you I hope this has helped you a lot understanding what's going on in Europe and around the world for farming so please do try to contact some of these farmers I do have some documents uh, that you're gonna see listed below on farming projects I'm really trying my hardest to get involved in some farming um, my first job ever was working at a grocery store it was my funnest job everything else I did in my life was completely not as fun I loved just um, the fast paced nature of food and working with so many different people was really fun and that was my first job anyway so um but um i still am very interested in trying to understand what's going on with uh food and health um and actually i'm going to be uh, looking at another topic uh teeth actually ironically several of my friends have really bad teeth and have not been brushing their teeth and may even die because of their tooth problems. So I'm gonna try to do a little bit of study into teeth next, um, which is kind of a weird topic for food, but uh, man, it just breaks my heart. And I'm scared as heck for some of my friends because they may die um, just because they haven't been brushing their teeth. And it's unbelievable. I don't know how bad this problem, this problem is bad in America. I have several friends 
I have one guy I haven't even seen. I think he may have died. So because of his teeth, he was telling me, he was screaming about how bad the problem was. And if this problem is bad in the United States, man, how bad is it in other parts of the world? So teeth is something I'm going to be looking at carefully next. Uh, but uh, take a look at the farms. Uh, try to help out as much as you can. I'm so thankful to be able to work on this and help everyone out. See you later. Have a great day.